Hey guys, and welcome back to Haunting Grounds. When we last left off, we... Ooh, dear. Definitely don't want to be walking into that. That would be rather unfortunate. So when we last left off, we were just about to go into the crypt after feeding it uh, the crypt hand. <laughs> Amanda... Mandarin thing. Can't remember what they're called now. Mandagoria. Yes, that was it. So... This is kind of an interesting room. As you can see, we have a golem here and uh, a rather dead chap. A corpse lies on the altar, clutching a stone tablet in a death grip. The golem sacrifice must be offered to the ever-burning wall of Hades that hinders your quest. Shepherd the beast to the land of Merth, or Meth, by etching your will into a string of letter-based commands. The primitive golem follows but two commands. In the simplest of terms, they are the letter L moves the beast left, the letter R moves it right. The four letters, combination of R, 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 will open the path to the small garden. Yeah, this is, this is kind of an interesting little section actually, and you can see there's lots of tablets and things strewn around, but sadly we can't read them. So I guess this is where they were originally exacting these beasts from, because you can kind of see an outline there. But um, we've got a bit of work to do down here, and that's putting it lightly. If we explore these catacombs, we can find these flames all over the place. Ooh. I don't know what Huey's growling at, but yeah, so we've got these flames everywhere and we need to extinguish those to move on. However, we need to give instructions to our fellow friend here. Now we only actually need to use one of these to actually get on and uh, move on with the game, but we're going to get everything because why the devil not? The plate pressing machine. So let's start off with what the tablet said. Let's go for right, 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 right. Go have a look at this garden that we've heard so much about. Now, unfortunately, this is a little bit um, laborious because we have to put the plate in like normal. And we have to wait for him to slowly walk his ass through. Which is kind of a pain in the ass. However, we can push the B button or circle, as it says there, to speed him up. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't perform miracles, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. Now, the next two parts of this uh, game might be a little bit shorter. We might stick them to 20 minutes, because I am rapidly running out of recording time this week. But we're going to let our friend move his ass over and we're gonna have a nice little look at the garden not quite sure why we have to offer a sacrifice of a golem to put these flames out but I don't make the rules but he's pretty good at putting the flames out now what about our golem you I hear you you screaming at the screen. Uh, yeah, he just like appears back there for some reason. So anyway, let's go right. Right again. Right again and right one final time. And that leads us up here to our first little Brucey bonus. Yeah, eh, as much as this game says it's like a little garden area and well, I'm sure it is. You can actually see where this is as well. It's the other side of the crypt. Now, all that's here is a piece of lavender, which admittedly, a piece of lavender is rather nice, but it's not super, super important. Anyway, smells like burnt meat. A dreadful odour indeed. They must be cooking an animal's carcass. Wonderful. So let's get out of here. So we've got ourselves a piece of lavender. Now I don't know who's cooking a animal's carcass. 
I assume it's Dan Daniela, I believe her name is. I always get confused with her name. Just call her the maid. Anyway, right, so we're back to our friendly neighborhood uh golem. So we're gonna feed him R R R this time. There you go, buddy. Just what you always wanted. Another token, so you can become my slave once more. So I'm not really sure if, um, like, Daniela is some kind of advanced maid. Or if there's something more to it. I'm wondering if eventually it's going to be explained. Although, with most of this game, it's left up to our interpretation. Because they never expressly said that diabetes was um, a failed experiment. But I have heard kind of like conflicting reports about him. I mean, given everything else that seems to be happening in this place, it makes sense that he's a failed experiment, kind of like Daniela. I mean, <coughs> uh, I suppose you could say with um, diabetes, they they did a worse job with him. Kind of, well, I don't know because they're saying that. I mean, Daniela. I mean, she looks a bit more normal, but she's nah, she's very broken, as we've seen. So I don't know. I'm not sure how much water that holds. But anyway, let's not worry about that. So let's go right. Nope, we want double right. Right, right, left. Right, right. Boom. And let's send our muddy friend on his way. One day I'm going to start pushing the right button. Today is not that day though. Alright, get a wiggle on, mate. Jesus, time is money. See, he's not in a rush, though, is he? Obey your master, boy. So this uh, sends us somewhere quite interesting. I'm assuming this is a little optional area, but it's definitely worth having a little poke around in. Because, uh, well... I guess you guys are just about to find out. Unfortunately, one puzzle does indeed lead to another. But that's okay. Also, I should have made more coffee before I started recording. Rookie mistake. So, this leads to a couple of things. The first of those things is a flashing item, which we are going to go pilfer. Oh, right, Huey, let's go. So we want to go right, and then we want to go right, and then we want to go left, and then we want to go right, and right again. Now, what does that give us? That gives us, uh, I think it's a medal of some description. Yeah, just a standard, ordinary medallion. Nothing too fancy, but I guess we'll have it. So, let's go. Look at this, though. We really are under underwater. It looks like we've got one of those lantern fish, which are pretty nasty customers. And I can't remember that eel thing that's right in front of the screen now. I, I have seen that in a documentary, but I can't remember what it's called. But yeah, the lantern fish is kind of nasty. Come on, Hughie. I know, Hughie. I know it's a pain in the ass to go up all these stairs. But you'll be fine. Now, this opens up into a rather fantabulous library. And, well, I guess if it's going to give us the option to save. Well, who are we to deny such a simple pleasure? There we go. Now, 
Let's grab this. What's this? There's a book lying on the table. It's the Cathedral Secrets. Okay. Curious. Very curious. Now let's give this a good old shove over as well. Hark. Is that another book? Aye, lad. It is another book. And one more. One of the books stands out from the rest. It does. The Wiseman's Crafts. Interesting. So, you can see some of these are on rails. Well, some of these have... Uh, the books have been arranged by author. The shelf is full of books written by somebody named uh, Fuca, Fucanelli. Okay. And there's a convenient space, so... Let's find the correct book for the correct hole and see what secrets are laid there in front of us. Uh, so we're going to have that. Uh, we should, I think there's... yeah. So there's another place here. So let's stick that one in there. This kind of reminds me of the library from Resident Evil 2 uh, when you've got to do that um, puzzle. Uh, moving the bookcases to get the plug. I don't know why it reminds me of that because You know, it's not actually anything like that whatsoever but eh, <laughs> It's what popped into my head when I was playing this earlier But then you know made by the same developers so what are you gonna do? Why do I get the feeling there's something in here? Go, Huey. Am I missing something? Huey, have a have a good sniff round, lad. Probably not a great idea. Get a lot of dust in your nose. Ah, I don't feel so bad, laddie. That's fine. You did what you could. Okay, so let's have a little look. Now we can get to the door. That leads us into this rather unassuming area. There's some chicken on the floor, which is nice. Scattered mannequin parts are strewn about. When assembled correctly, these parts were all locked together to make the mannequin look quite real. Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? Just a lifeless mannequin. Just a lifeless mannequin. Yes, very much so. A screen. Has somebody been watching films here recently? Well, maybe. Maybe. Oh, we can actually go behind this film. There's nothing there. So, note to self. There is a projector set up here. It looks rather old, but perhaps it still works. It should still work, and we have a film reel. A wound roll of film that has already been exposed. I wonder what it's about. Yeah, let's have a little look, shall we? Would be rude not to, after all. So there's Diabetes. Looks like he's carrying us. Hmm, is us getting dressed? Oh my. This film looks rather recent, doesn't it? Gee, I wonder if that's going to be useful later. What is this? I was being filmed. Yeah. Hello.
you after me? What do you want? Azoth. Azoth? Azoth. Essence of life. Of life. Of wo wo woman. Woman. She definitely got a few screws loose, that's for sure. So she wants Azoth, essence of life, essence of woman. Hmm. Okay. Well, you won't be getting that from me. I can promise you that. All right, let's go. Come on. Quickly as we can, Fiona, because, you know. Oof. Right, let's go. <laughs> Time we wasn't here. Come on, Yugi. Or Huey, I should say. Right, well, I mean, what's interesting, when she kind of goes batshit crazy and spins her head around, it sounds like uh, she's actually a mannequin. I don't know if that's just like a sound effect that they've added in to add a bit of like dramatic effect to that scene, but it definitely sounds like she's a mannequin that's been reanimated and brought back to life. <sighs> hmm... So anyway, Fiona has this Azoth stuff, this essence of life inside her. And, well, <laughs> it just seems like everybody wants a little bit of that, don't they? Well, we've done about as much as we can. Let's go and take this home and open up the real passageway out of here. Yeah, so, uh, unfortunately for our friend Fiona here, this gift she's born with is kind of her downfall. Or at least the reason everybody wants to either rip things out of her body or, you know, put things into it. So let's get our friend moving. Now I wonder as well, with the fact that... Um, uh, Fiona being beaten around. I want uh, not Fiona, Daniela being beaten around. I wonder if that's actually damaged her, causing her to be worse. I think uh, we've got kind of a big problem by the front door. Looks like there's a, a hell of a leak <laughs> happening as one of our floor, uh, one of our floor, one of our ceiling tiles has swelled up and starting to bow down, um, and our floor is soaking wet. So, oh, hello. So that's bad. Anyway, I'm gonna have to sort that out. Uh, right, so. Ooh, we have a strange man muttering some things to us. That's unsettling. And now we're in the crazy staircase, which is really bizarre. Come on. Also, what you should have seen there is a medal that Huey's jumped across and grabbed for us. However, uh, you didn't see that because the video wasn't recording. So, we're in a new, fresh area. What fresh hell are we looking at this time? Go have a little look around, shall we? What's behind door number one? Ooh, right. This is looking a little bit, uh, different. Like a medical room. With some lavender on it. Yeah, we've also got a sink which we can drink from, which is nice. I hope this water won't make me sick if I drink it. Yeah, me too. I don't like the way we're standing through Huey's, like, brain, either. Um. So, looks like plastic containers used to store chemicals. You can make out the word ethanol written on the labels. Ooh, ethanol. Alcohol. No, it's not alcohol, it's ethanol. But, you know, I wonder what's inside. It's not like it's going to explode or anything, right? Well, let's hope not, Fiona, but you never know. 
There's a device which appears to be used for measuring things. I wonder what they use it to measure. Me too. Very curious. I wonder if this could serve as a hiding spot if I'm ever in a pinch. Oh darn. It's locked. That's no good. We've also got a bottle here that stands out. Several bottles containing various chemicals have been left out. Hmm. The words sulfuric acid are written on one bottle. Hmm, that sounds interesting. There's some kind of medicine bottle on the shelf. It says ac ac acetic acid on it. Hmm. Well, we have some offensive options in case we need them. So that's cool. Anyway, let's keep exploring. Ooh. Keep exploring. Really? Really? Two pots with nothing in them. Ooh. So there are books spread out on the table. They seem to pertain to complex formulas, but they're far beyond my level of comprehension. Hmm. Okay, well. The hell is that? Synthesizer. By separating the platinum half piece and then synthesizing it with the sacred white, a new spirit spirituality infused substance is born. The path you're walking is ever so dangerous, however. If you don't want the sacred white to be fouled by blood, then you should give up the grand process here. Okay, that's ominous. Um. Oh. Hello? Hello? Well... I'm guessing our friend is near. Because... Yep, she's near. I don't know where she is, but you know what? Remember that? Oh, she's back up there. Seriously? So she's coming behind us. Well, let's go. Hello. Come with me, you. I found something that you might like. I think you're going to like it. You're going to like it a lot. So we're going to run into the medical room and we're going to see if we're quick enough. We're going to drop a save state and hopefully we can get this done because there's a couple of little things I want to show you here. Yes, 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 yes. It's all fun and games until somebody gets a large quantity of nasty chemicals in the brain. Come on. Come on. Come on. Miz. Come get me, you Oh, you bitch. Well, you're probably not actually that old. But old enough to know better, anyway. Right, let's try... Oh, come on, man. I wonder if we can load it quick enough. No. No. This is going to be another one of those moments where it's going to be hard to show this off, isn't it? Hey! Bitch slapping me in the back of the head. That won't do. No, sir. So you know what we're going to do? Right, Huey. Huey, you're not listening to me. Right, go attack her. And whilst you're doing that, I'm going to go and prepare myself. Now, I'm going to use this lovely bottle of chemicals. <clears throat>
Hmm. Unfortunately, those chemicals don't do an awful lot to her. But that's okay. We have one more. Alright, go get her, Huey. There we go. Alright, so that stuff didn't really do an awful lot of much. Let's try the sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid will handle just about anything. We hope. <laughs> oh, that felt so satisfying. So yeah, we can actually fry her face. Good boy. Stay. We can actually fry her face up Stop. with some quality sulfuric acid. All right, well, he's a little bit unsettled. And in the interest of uh, time, guys, well, we are basically out of time. And we're also where we need to be. By a save spot. We like our save spots around these places. So we're going to drop a save here, guys. And it's been fun. I've enjoyed playing with chemicals. I don't think uh, the maid liked them as much as we did. But um, that was satisfying. And I like these little context sensitive things that we can do. Uh, this kind of, again, brings it back to the fact that this was originally a clock tower game. Um, now, I also say with the characters' faces and the animations, they are un believably good for the time I mean, even now they're not bad you know they convey a hell of a lot of emotion uh, any more than it has any right to do you know you look at some other PlayStation 2 games and original Xbox games even 360 games and there's just like a total lack of any kind of animation on the face but this game has it in spades so anyway guys thank you very much for watching and as always till next time